here's the research that I want to share today. And it started with the, the CHRO of, of ADP, Srini, coming to us and going, I want to know how, we're how well we're doing. How well are we doing as an HR function? And when you charge around and try to look at what is the best way to start measuring that, what you realize, maybe, maybe you've got a different answer than we came up with, but we, we looked, we couldn't find anything. We couldn't find what is a reliable way to measure the effectiveness of an HR function. So, so the goal in all of this research was threefold. One, can we actually define what are the experiences that an employee wants from an HR function? Whether through technology or through a person, how, what are the experiences that a particular employee wants from the HR function. Second, can you measure them? And then third, once you measure them, can you figure out what they drive? And then can you figure out, secondarily, what drives them? What's the cause? What's the effect? So that was the intent. Here's what we did. For those of you who know how to build psychometric instruments, you'll be familiar with this. You start with qualitative, doing interviews with all sorts of different HR executives. You build a really big instrument, way too big, in our case, it was 67 possible items taken directly from these interviews. And then we fielded it against four different samples. So we exposed it here to 32,000 people, as Steve said, around the world, always looking at what do employees really want from an HR function, which I hope is sort of interesting to many of you in the room. And here's where we ended up. These 15 items measure five distinct sorts of experiences that people want from the HR function. I hope that those five experiences and these 15 questions can guide you on what your particular intervention, your program, your technology is trying to do for the individual employees that you serve. Um, here's, here's what they are. First of all, and this is a hierarchy, it's a statistical hierarchy. It's going to look Maslovian to you, although Maslow's hierarchy was purely theoretical. There is data aggregation to this. So at the base of everything, what they want, what every employee wants is this. Give me what I need. My HR provides me with the resources needed to do my job. The communication I receive is always easy to understand. HR helps me understand what I'm legally entitled to. Really straightforward needs. Second, you make me feel safe. Do you make me feel safe? I believe I can report any incident without retribution. I'm confident that HR will properly handle any other ethical behavior, and I can super count on HR to help resolve workplace issues. I added a super in there. Do you value me? Do you understand me? Do you get me? Do you get me? Do you get me? I'm a real human. Do you get me? I felt a sense of belonging to this company when I first started. I strongly believe HR does the right things for me. For me. I believe HR follows through on promises made to employees. Do you value me? Do you get me? Do you want me to grow? Does HR help me grow? No, I know managers should help me grow and so forth, but does HR encourage me to seek ways to improve within my job? My company offers strong incentives that encourage me to improve my performance, and then my HR provides excellent guidance on how I can advance in my job. We all want to grow. We all want to get better. You put all those 15 together, and if you've got some, we ask them on a scale of one to five, by the way. Five strongly agree. And just to remind you, all of these will be on the app. All of these are on adpri.org if you want to dive into them in great detail, which I'm, so, I'm sure some of you might. You get all of these answered, you get this top one, of course. And this is the brass ring, isn't it? This is what all of you are shooting for. Do I super completely trust my HR? I feel empowered by HR to help my company succeed, and I feel that HR really cares about me. It does accrue. You can't go in at the summit. You've got to build from the ground up. Some of these five experiences might not surprise you, but it's, it's, it's such a clear kind of mandate for all of us in HR to go, how do we serve? How do we serve? Well, we serve by figuring out what are the psychological experiences that we want from us, from our HR, and then can we build HR technology, systems, programs, solutions that actually make people feel this way? From these questions, though, what's intriguing is from these questions, we can actually put anyone who answers them into one of three categories. You see HR as value promoting, you see HR as performing, or you see HR, frankly, as value detracting. Just simply based upon your answers to those 15 questions. We now have a measure of HR effectiveness. What does it drive? It drives your company's talent brand, because we asked everybody, how likely would you be to recommend your company to a family member or friend as a place to work? This is the money slide, really. If, you're, if you think that HR is value promoting, you are eight times <laughs> more likely to be a brand recommender or promoter of your company's talent brand. 
If HR wanted to know what kind of data do you bring to a CEO that would get that CEO's attention, that's the slide you bring. You don't bring any other slide but that. Every single CEO right now is worried about one thing. How do we find enough really good people and keep them? How do we do that? If you have people charging around in your community dissing your talent brand, then pretty much everything else that you're trying to figure out to do at the XCOM level is undermined. C can HR help us build a more powerful talent brand? Uh, yeah. IT doesn't do that for us. Our real estate department doesn't do that for us. Our marketing department doesn't do that for us. Our sales department doesn't do that for us. Our HR department has a strong causal relationship to people charging around, advocating the company as a place to work to friends and family. That's huge. It's a much more powerful function than psychologically than any other function. By the way, it also has a pretty strong relationship to my likelihood to leave. We ask people, do you have an intent to leave the current company? We ask people, are you actively looking for your, a new job? If you are, or you think that HR is value promoting, you're 3.7 times more likely to have no intent to leave. If you think that HR is value detracting, that's the bar on the right, you're 3.4 times more likely to be actively searching for a new job. By the way, because you know, 60,000 people at ADP, it's a pretty good. <laughs> It's a, it's a pretty good petri dish. So we can actually see whether people not just have an intent to leave, do they actually leave three months afterwards? So this is the relationship between people seeing that HR is value promoting and whether they actually leave. Now this is just ADP, so it's a sample of one. I totally get that. But it's a pretty big sample, and it's a really nice causal. It's not just correlational, it's causal. Or rather, it's time one to time two. We measured the HR XPS at time one. Three months later, were they still there or not? Okay, that's a beautiful... For any of you who love data, that's a beautiful real world thing. You measure it time one, you see what people actually go do at time two. So we now know quantifiably that people's experience of the HR function has a really significant impact on a few meaningful things. Whether I actually leave, whether I'm actually actively interviewing to leave, and whether I'm charging around advocating the company to my friends and family. And we can quantify it. That's, that's a good place for us to start as an entire industry or an entire function. What's our value? Our value is if we get it right, all sorts of other good things happen in arguably the tightest labor market that we've ever experienced. 